Hey guys, uh, I'm Ben Sedani and uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, uh, how to, how can you uh, set up uh, your own uh, private NPM registry. I hope everyone knows what uh, NPM is. If you know what NPM is then, oh, all right. So, uh, uh, have you ever uh, uh, used uh, or uh, thought that uh, you need a private package so you don't uh, want it to uh, make it public? So like your configurations or, or business uh, secrets or something like that. Well, if you, uh, if you did then, uh, you had uh, previously a few, only uh, just a few options and uh, none of them were uh, perfect. First, uh, you could install uh, the package, uh, the compressed package file uh, directly uh, by typing the URL or uh, typing the git uh, remote, which uh, npm can clone that repo. Uh, so, or if you are using GitHub, then you can use uh, on the th third line the shorthand uh, for uh, accessing uh, GitHub repos. Or if you are uh, using some private registry, then you can use uh, regular packages uh, and well, they are uh, much better than uh, the previous options because uh, with private uh, NPM, uh, you can use uh, semantic versioning and uh, all the great stuff that, that uh, comes from uh, the native, uh, well, the, um, fr from the real packages, not uh, just these, uh, uh, Git remotes and uh, uh, zip files. So uh, if you want to uh, set up a private registry, uh, you could use Synopia, which is, uh, uh, by the way, uh, have you, have anyone heard about Synopia? All right, so it's uh, very easy to set up a registry. Uh, it, almost, it needs uh, almost uh, no configuration. Uh, primarily, it's a private registry, but uh, it, uh, it is also a cache. So if you use it, use it uh, then you can speed up uh, the installation process uh, for uh, deployments. And of course, you can audit packages, so you can uh, filter out uh, um, packages that you don't trust. And if you uh, are behind uh, corporate firewalls or something like that, then you can uh, still use it because uh, it has, uh, because you don't have to um, reach uh, the regular uh, NPM registry, but uh, uh, your private one. And uh, it's uh, really simple. It doesn't uh, use any database. It uh, stores everything in uh, files, so it's really easy to uh, manage them, like creating backups or something like that. And it also supports uh, various authentication plugins, like the regular HTTP SVD uh, files or more enterprise solutions like uh, LDAP. All right, so how can you use it? Well, you just uh, simply uh, install it globally and uh, then you start it and after that, you can simply uh, use uh, the registry itself. Uh, for development purposes, it's um, that simple, but uh, if you want to use uh, it in production, then uh, you have a bit, uh, it's, it's a bit harder. So when you are using it in production, you have to think about uh, how can you manage it, like how can you uh, add users or remove users um, to the re registry, uh, how can you um, create backups from your packages um, and things like that. And uh, uh, you have to think about availability, like your uh, registry uh, must be uh, online uh, almost uh, always. Uh, by the way, and Previously, NPM uh, was um, quite, off uh, quite often offline. Mm, nowadays, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty stable, so maybe that's uh, uh, not really a use case, uh, but uh, 
if you are using your own private registry, it uh, offers um, higher uh, availability. And uh, if you are uh, running it, then uh, you have to think about uh, isolation uh, because if uh, uh, Synopia doesn't need to know about uh, other services on uh, your uh, environment. It just needs uh, only uh, his files, so it must be separated uh, from uh, other services on that host. Uh, so what uh, are the possibilities? Uh, my choice uh, was Docker, uh, so uh, are quite uh, uh, you heard about uh, Docker. So it, um, it solves all, the, all these previous problems, uh, like um, it uh, can isolate uh, processes by uh, using uh, containers. Uh, it offers uh, availability through uh, the Docker daemon, which can automatically restart uh, your container if it uh, crashes or something. And uh, you can easily manage uh, your data through uh, data containers, which I will explain uh, later. Uh, by the way, if you, uh, if you are new to, do new to Docker, then you should really go uh, to the Docker Budapest meetup. Uh, it's really great. So uh, just a really uh, quick introduction to Docker. Uh, Docker uh, is a, maybe a good analogy uh, would be uh, virtual machines, uh, because Docker can run uh, images, uh, the running images are called containers, and it behaves like uh, virtual machines, uh, but uh, that's not really, a, not really the case. It, uh, it has much uh, less, uh, it's uh, not so isolated, so if you are using, uh, if you are running it as uh, root, then you can easily uh, break out of the container, so it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's not for that purpose that you can replace virtual machines. Uh, another analogy would be uh, uh, a container is an isolated process. Like uh, you can, uh, in the example, I can run a simple uh, echo command. It's a simple isolated process and uh, that command uh, will create a container from the busybox image, which is a very minimal, uh, um, in the image, uh, it runs uh, this echo command and uh, then it destroys itself. Uh, maybe the best analogy for uh, containers is uh, a logical service, which means it, uh, it's, it, it doesn't necessarily a uh, single process, like um, I don't know if it needs more processes than, than it can start them, but uh, it should be a, 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 a standalone uh, component of your application. So, uh, our solution for uh, Synopia was uh, to use uh, three containers. Uh, one container for all the configuration and all uh, the data that uh, will be stored uh, by Synopia, like the packages uh, themselves and uh, authentication files and, and so on. So everything that's, uh, uh, that's uh, changing. And uh, there are uh, two other containers. Uh, uh, the Synopia instance itself, uh, which is uh, really just uh, the command uh, I showed you pr previously. Uh, is, uh, it listens on the, that specific part, and uh, there is the third image, uh, third uh, image, which is a simple nginx uh, instance, which acts uh, as a reverse proxy. Uh, we are using uh, HTTPS, uh, so that's uh, why we needed uh, that uh, reverse proxy because Synopia previously uh, not supported HTTPS. Maybe now it supports it. I'm not sure. But um, at the time, I d at the time, it was uh, not so easy to uh, make that possible. Uh, so uh, that nginx instance, uh, uh, nginx container, uh, exposes uh, the relevant ports to the host uh, host operating system, uh, and then you can uh, access it uh, uh, 
from uh, your computer or from uh, your network. So everything uh, inside uh, the Synopia container and the Synopia uh, is isolated. You can't access it. Uh, you, you don't really see what's uh, happening uh, inside them besides uh, mm, the logs that it uh, creates. Uh, the only way you can uh, uh, access uh, the data, uh, uh, access the registry is uh, through the Nginx uh, instance. So uh, just, uh, I hope uh, I can do a quick dem de demo for you. So I will try to install uh, this uh, architecture on my uh, computer. So, all right. No? Can you see the, what I'm typing, all right. So, uh, first, I will start uh, the um, Synopia container. Uh, I will uh, run it as a daemon. Uh, its uh, name will be S Synopia container and uh, that will be uh, the image. All right, uh, it has started, it has uh, the specific uh, ID. If I time docker, Yes, uh, no, that's not, yeah. It shows that uh, the container is, uh, the container is ex exists. Uh, so now I can start uh, the Synopia instance itself. No. Synopia which uh, now I uh, will start the Synopia uh, container, which uh, uses uh, this previous container, the, the data uh, from the previous container. So, and the uh, image that it uses is that uh, purpose slash Synopia. I will start that. Uh, if I type docker logs Synopia, I see that uh, it listens on uh, localhost, which is uh, not quite good for me because I want to, uh, to listen on every address. So I just quickly create another container which, uh, which will start a simple file editor and I will uh, edit the configuration file in the Synopia container that, uh, and Synopia uses that configuration file. So, next I will, uh, um, yeah. All right, so I will tell uh, Docker that after I'm done, you, uh, it can remove, uh, uh, the container, it can delete it. Uh, I will tell, also tell it that uh, I need, I, it's uh, an interactive session so I can type. Uh, it imports uh, all the files from the Synopia container and I uh, use a simple VI editor. All right, so I will tell the, well actually this is the, all the configuration that uh, Synopia needs. So I will tell that uh, it should listen on all addresses. Which port was that? All right. And I also have to tell that uh, I'm running is it uh, under the address localhost. 
I guess that's it. All right. All right. If I Synopia, I will res I will restart uh, the Synopia uh, instance. If I now run Docker logs, then it runs, it listens on all addresses, and then I will, I will just try to start uh, the nginx container. It will run as a daemon. Nginx, and this is a tricky one. Uh, it uses the files uh, from Synopia container. It is linked the, to the Synopia instance. Uh, link means that port that I'm uh, exposing, that uh, uh, the Synopia port is accessible to uh, this uh, Nginx container. And then I will expose uh, to the host uh, the HTTP port. And hopefully, no, I cannot really start that because um, I will have to reinstall. I will try to download that image again because there is some bug in Docker which uh, doesn't allow me to start it. Hopefully, I can. No, that's not good. All right, so I will try something uh, different. I will try to re-download those uh, images. It takes a, a bit, uh, well, I don't know. All right, so now I will just quickly run those previous uh, commands. So, if you are, um, if you are, uh, if you try to re run these commands, uh, Docker will automatically uh, download uh, the necessary images uh, for you. For example, it automatically downloads uh, those uh, the Synopia container and everything else. And uh, after that, it will also start it. So, hopefully, it uh, it will finish fast. Uh, well, in the meantime, I will I will start another image also. It takes a bit longer because uh, these images are actual uh, uh, operating system images, so all the necessary files are there. So that's like. They are so big, All right? I will move this to <coughs> right. In the meantime, I will uh, show you. Uh, that I will, at the end, I will publish uh, a private package. Uh, it's uh, really small. It will be just a simple uh, scope package. 
and it will just simply print out to the standard output something. So it will be just that. I will publish uh, that to my uh, private registry. If the download completes, Mm. Also, um, um, all right. So I will start an engine. Uh, I will the engine uh, configuration needs to be edited too. So I will just click, quickly show you uh, what it is. Uh, it's a really simple uh, engine configuration. It will. Uh, it includes uh, a special uh, configuration file which is uh, g generated at uh, runtime. So when I start the container, it will edit this uh, Synopia conf file that will uh, contain uh, just uh, this upstream uh, uh, location. So it knows that uh, it has to forward all requests uh, to the Synopia instance. Also, it will use a basic authentication, so uh, nothing complicated. And uh, because I don't want to allow users to register in Synopia, I just uh, create a, a hack for uh, NPM uh, login. We, uh, this will catch all the NPM login commands and uh, it will simulate a successful authentication. All right, it started. So that's when I have to edit the configuration. Also, the busy box is not there. All right, I tell again that <laughs> this song. There. Oh. No, it's not there, but uh. what the fuck? Start again. No. I don't need that. Again. All right, so listen on all addresses. Also, URL prefix. Restart the Synopia instance. Right, and I will start the NGX container, which has to be downloaded too. I hope it will download quickly. So, uh, back to the uh, presentation now a bit. Uh, all these uh, containers and uh, all the Docker files are available on GitHub and also on the uh, Docker Hub. You can download them, you can use them uh, right now. Uh, it, uh, they don't need really uh, too much configuration. Uh, you can use uh, HTTPS too. Uh, now.
these Docker images are made from uh, various layers that uh, they work real similar to uh, Git repositories. So every uh, layer has a hash and uh, they build on each other. Uh, so that's why it needs so many layers. Uh, all right, so I will quickly Next, yeah. I will keep uh, quickly copy the uh, my configuration uh, into the data container. No, that's not why I'm not on the. Next, yeah. All right. No, that's not here. All right, so I need, so here's, here are all the containers running, maybe, all right, so the Nginx has some errors, but see, not, yeah. it just uh, exited because uh, the configuration wasn't present. So I will, I will just start again. And it started and then I should be able to look at host and yeah, I didn't create yet any uh, authentication. So I will just quickly uh, add one. Right, so I will create uh, in the Docker container an HTTP SVD file, and it will be just really simple. It uses plain passwords. So it will be just like that. And then I reload. Wow, it shows that I have no packages yet. I will change into this directory. I set my registry to localhost. I log in. So the previous uh, infos that I've uh, Added to the uh, to the HTTP SVD file, right? And now I run npm publish. Yay! I published uh, my package. It's there. Wow! And I will go up a few directories, maybe there and here. All right, so uh, I just remove the file, and if I now run npm install uh, node.bp slash hello node.bp, then hopefully it will install my uh, published package, and if I run then I can require it. So, uh, so uh, that was it. Uh, sorry for the uh, uh, demo effect. Uh, that I think always happens. So uh, that was the demo. Uh, has anyone uh, questions? Yes? Uh, well, I'm using uh, Fish. Uh, it's similar to Bash and uh, uh, the, uh, it's similar to Bash, but uh, uh, there there are uh, auto completion plugins for Bash too. Uh, it's not nothing uh, uh, nothing really Fish specific. So it's quite, quite fancy price. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, I like that too. <laughs> yes? Uh, yes, actually, we are using uh, these images to run our private uh, registry. So it's uh, already in production, like uh, maybe more than two months. Yes? Uh, more from a client perspective? Do you want to switch from the client between one registry to another? Well, uh, you, ca uh, you can actually. Uh, uh, configure your NPM to use the public registry if you are using, if you are installing regular packages um, uh, and only use your private, private registry when you are using uh, scope packages. So uh, my package was prefixed with, uh, uh, with this at NodeBP, which is a, a, a scope. So I can tell uh, NPM that it, uh, it should use the public registry. But if I, if, uh, I try to install a scope package, then it will use uh, the private registry. Okay. Questions? All right, then, thank you uh, very much.